Maths of the Coronavirus Part 8, Toilet Paper, an Introduction to Mathematical Series. In the last video, I introduced the idea of a sequence, which is a list of numbers in order that can be described using some kind of rule. And the one we're particularly interested in is this one. Each C is the circumference of a layer on a roll of toilet paper. And we have a rule that will figure out the length of the circumference on each layer. C sub n equals pi times d plus 2 nt, where d is the diameter of the cardboard roll and t is the thickness of the toilet paper. But that doesn't answer our original question, which was how much toilet paper is left on the roll? To work that out, we'd have to add up all the layers. And this gets us into the world of a mathematical idea called a series, basically adding up all the terms in a sequence. Now, if we've actually sat down and worked out the circumference of each layer, the whole process is easy, if somewhat tedious. We just take all the numbers and add them up. A trained monkey could do that much. But if I've got 50 layers, that's going to be an awfully long process. We really need a shortcut. It would be great if we could work out a formula that would do all the adding up for us. So let's start out with the formula that we've worked out for each circumference, muck around with it, and see what we can come up with. So we've got the first three layers, pi outside of d plus 2t, pi outside of d plus 4t, and pi outside of d plus 6t. Now let's add them all up. Well, the first thing we can do, because we've got some algebra skills, is to factor the pi out the front. So that gives me pi outside of d plus 2t plus d plus 4t plus d plus 6t. Now, again, using the algebra skills we already have, we can collect some like terms. So that will give us pi outside of, so I've got d, 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 three d's. Then I'll put the t's together, so that's plus 2t, plus 4t, plus 6t. Alright, well there's our first hint. Look at the d, I've got 3d's. I added up three terms and I got d three times. Not really surprising, if I added up four terms I'd get 4d's. So if I added up n terms, I'd have n number of d's. So nd seems to be part of our answer. So let's put that down, pi outside of n times d plus. Now let's have a look at what we've got here, 2t plus 4t plus 6t. To make it easier, we're just going to take that out separately. So we'll just have 2t plus 4t plus 6t. Again, let's do a little bit of factoring, take the t out the front, that gives me t outside of 2 plus 4 plus 6. Which is okay, because I can add up 2 and 4 and 6. But if I had another term, it would give me 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8. If I had another term after that, it'd be 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10. And again, that would land me back where I started, doing a whole lot of manual adding up, which I don't want to do. So this is the bit where we might be able to find a rule to help us. So the way to do that is to use a little bit of maths intuition and sometimes use a table and look for a pattern. So if I had just one term, if n equals 1, then I would just have the 2. If n was equal to 2, that is I had two terms to add up, then I'd have 2 plus 4 and that would equal 6. If I have three terms, I'd have 2 plus 4 plus 6, and that of course equals 12. And there's a hint for the pattern right there. Have a look at the relationship between the answers on the right and the n numbers. If I've got n equals 1, then I've turned it into 2. If I've got 2, it turned into 6. If I've got 3, it turned into 12. Let's ask ourselves, what would I have to multiply each n number by to get the answer on the right? Well, 1 would have to be times by 2, because 1 times 2 is 2. 
2 would have to be times by 3 because 2 times 3 is 6. 3 would have to be times by 4 because 3 4s are 12. And I don't think it would take too much maths to figure out that if n was equal to 4, it would be 4 times 5 and that would equal 20. So we can then generalise and say for any n, it's n times the next number up, n plus 1. So that set of brackets, 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus blah 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 blah, works out to be n, where n is the number of terms I'm adding up, times n plus 1. That is going to make our lives much easier. So let's take that little formula we figured out and put it back in the work we were doing before. We left the work at pi outside of n times d plus 2t plus 4t plus 6t. Now we factored out the t, if you recall, so we'll do that again. That gives me pi outside of nd plus t outside of 2 plus 4 plus 6. And we worked out that 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus blah 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 is n times n plus 1. So that gives me a final expression of pi outside of nd plus t outside of n times n plus 1. And that gives me a formula for the sum of all those layers added up because that's what we started with. We started up adding up the layers. So we're going to call that s sub n, which is the sum of all the layers added up to n layers. And so now, if I want to find the sum to 25 layers, all I've got to do is put 25 into that formula instead of n, always assuming, of course, I know what d and t are. Let's go and have a look at what that looks like in a practical example. Let's take all of that and check if it works. So we're back to our mathematical model. You can see the cardboard roll in the centre of the toilet paper here, the purple circle. You can see the diameter of that roll, 40 millimetres, and the thickness of a sheet of toilet paper as half a millimetre. And on the screen you can see two ways to figure out the total amount of paper. The first is over here in the blue. And as we add more layers, you'll see this number go up. And this is just adding up manually, like the trained monkey, all the lengths of the circumferences all the way up. And you'll see those numbers appear. Over here in the red, we get the calculation using the formula we just created in a previous slide. Now, obviously ignore C0, because remember the number Cn, n is the number of layers of paper on the roll. At the moment, we've got nothing. We've just got a cardboard roll. So let's move up a layer, one layer. The circumference of layer 1 is 128.81, and therefore that's the total amount of paper on the roll manually adding up agrees with formula. Let's make it two. Remember just those two if you're working with your calculator adds up to that works with the formula and so forth and so forth. And so by doing this and going back to our original model we can check that the formula we've come up with for our series that is adding up the terms of a sequence actually works in practice. And if you want to then figure out what's really on the roll, what you need to do is, of course, adjust these numbers up here to reflect reality, depending on what make of toilet paper you buy, and then run it through the formula we've got. You don't need to go through all that. You've already done the hard work. So I hope this video has introduced you to the idea of a mathematical model and the power of a mathematical series to help you do calculations that would otherwise be very long and very tedious.